Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films, my name is Alan. With a backdrop of endless space and faraway galaxies, it's oftentimes hard to understand just how large some of the starships we see in movies actually are. And even if we do get measurements for these ships, it's oftentimes hard to visualize how large an object is. I mean, I don't know what the hell 6 meters looks like, but I do know what a Ford F-150 packed to the rim with barbecue supplies, fireworks, tricks, and bikinis in America looks like. America. So today we're going to take a look at some of the most famous starships in science fiction films and show you just how large they actually are. Not only using measurements, because let's be honest, our conversions from metric to standard and back are oftentimes completely off 100% of the time, half the time. So we're going to just use real life objects as well to explain just how massive some of these vessels are. Just to note, a lot of the ships in our research, like the Icarus 2 from Sunshine, the Roger Young from Starship Troopers, the giant prawn ship from District 9, and the Hermes from the Martian didn't actually have any concrete stats about how long they were, so we can't really cover them in this video. I apologize. In the film Interstellar, man's last hope as a plague wipes out all the crops on Earth as a handful of astronauts looking to find a new home for humanity amongst the stars. Their vessel is the NASA Craft Endurance, an app named for the grueling journey they are all about to go on. The ship must safely carry them and thousands of human eggs and sperms through a wide range of space hazards, ranging from a mysterious wormhole to the giant black hole of happiness known as Matt Damon. I'm sorry! Ah! The ship is not overly large by sci-fi standards at 65 meters in diameter, but fits more into the reasonable size of what NASA could be capable of creating in the next half century. While the film The Martian is a bit more grounded in actual science, the main ship in that film, the Hermes, is way too large for an early 21st century spaceship. Anyway, at 65 meters in diameter, it would look like this if it were parked on a football field, and for all of our European friends who we probably won't see in the future because of Article 13, it would look like this on a football field. And it's also about the length of 14 Toyota Corollas, which are also boring but sensibly designed and efficient, like the Endurance. The entire ship rotates around its axis at 5 RPM to simulate Earth gravity. Every box features a module for different things, ranging from habitats, food production, to laboratories. With the use of sleeping pods, the Endurance was able to function without support for several decades. Now, if you like movies like Star Wars and The Fifth Element, I highly recommend you guys check out Serenity and the TV show that it came from. It's one of those gems that kind of got lost amongst the larger, more boring franchises. The film and TV show follow the adventure of the crew of the Firefly, which is a spaceship that literally looks like a Firefly. In all honesty, I am a fan of this show, but I really don't like how this ship looks. But that's not the point. The designers purposely wanted the Firefly to look lived in and a bit broke ass. Built in August 2459, the ship was 82 meters long, small by galactic standards at the time, but next to the ISS, it would look like this. It's also a couple meters longer than two space shuttles parked end to end. Inspired in many ways by Han Solo and the Millennium Falcon, the crew of the Firefly also dabbled in smuggling, so this ship can carry up to 74,800 kilos of cargo, which is 10,000 kilos more than what an Airbus A350-1000 can take in its hold. Almost a decade before George Lucas introduced us to the Star Wars Galaxy and other space-themed movies stunned audiences with its impressive visuals. We of course are talking about Stanley Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey. One of the awesome vessels we are introduced to in this movie is the Discovery 1, which takes the characters on a voyage to Jupiter. This is quite a spacious ship at over 140 meters long that is roughly the same height as a 40-story building and the length of two Airbus A380s. The USS Okako was a Conestoga-class starship, 13th in its class, which I'm sure made it especially lucky. It was originally designed as a cargo or troop transport, but due to demand, many of the Conestoga-class starships, including the USS Okako, was refitted as a rapid-response military transport, which meant it had weapons that were capable of orbital bombardment, which honestly would be my first and only reaction to finding any life in the galaxy if I were a colonial marine. The USS Sulcaco was 365 meters in length and 78,000 metric tons with the ability to hold an additional 20,000 tons of cargo. Unlike the modular construction of the ISS, the USS Sulcaco was built on one large frame. Kind of like the giant ocean-going ships we have in our own galaxy. 
It would be pretty hard to build a ship like the USS Holkako piece by piece with smaller modules launched from Earth. This ship is most likely the product of an orbital shipyard like the ones we see in Star Wars with materials mined from asteroids and zero-g factories assembling the ship in space. At 365 meters, it's three meters longer than the largest cruise liner on Earth, Royal Caribbean's Symphony of the Seas. In a galaxy not so far away and not too far off into the future, we have one of the most recognizable starships in sci-fi. We of course are talking about the USS Enterprise. Designed for deep space exploration missions, the Enterprise ran on a fusion reactor and the soles of crew members wearing red shirts or mustard shirts, depending on the period. While it wasn't the largest ship in the Federation fleet, it was definitely one of the most versatile. The USS Enterprise was 642.6 meters long, which makes it a few meters higher than Tokyo's sky tree. If you guys want more Star Trek ship size comparisons, check out our other channel, Generation Tech, right over here in the corner. We do an entire series on them. What's worse than creeping on a girl you like while she's sleeping? while well, creeping on a girl you like while she's sleeping and then purposely wake her up from her cryo chamber 90 years before your ship reaches its destination, forcing the two of you to spend the rest of your lives alone on a giant ship and not tell her that you did it purposely. And by giant ship, I mean the Starship Avalon, a long-range sleeper ship that is carrying 5,000 passengers off to a new planet in the film Passengers, which shouldn't be confused with the other movie, also called Passengers and featuring Anne Hathaway, but not as a interstellar traveler like she is in the stellar interstellar film Interstellar. What are we talking about? Ah, uh, yeah. So the Avalon is a seat ship gently gliding on the currents of space. And it's quite a large seat. At one kilometer long, it takes the average human around 20 minutes to walk the entire length at a leisurely pace. At one kilometer long, it would be as long as the Empire State Building if it stuck its antenna up One World Trade Center's undercarriage. A long time ago, we were first introduced to the beautiful world of Halo through the ship Pillar of Autumn. This was back when Cortana was still stable and didn't need a clean install, back when Master Chief wasn't worshipped as a pop culture icon. It was a simple story about a ship trying to escape the wrath of an alien civilization, which then stumbles on a secret installation created by another alien civilization, and then finally they encounter a whole new, different zombie alien species that threatens to destroy the entire universe. Now, far away from Earth on a strange alien installation, the only home that the players know is the Pillar of Autumn. That's kind of what made it so special. While not the largest ship in the UNSC, the Pillar of Autumn was a Halcyon-class light cruiser, which meant it had a special honeycombed hull that made it a lot stronger than it looked. Combined with a specialized Mac gun, which had a higher firing rate than smaller projectiles, the Pillar of Autumn could hold its own against multiple Covenant capital ships. At 1.171 kilometers long, that meant the Pillar of Autumn could park itself in the Hudson River at Midtown and still have a few dozen meters to spare. It's also longer than four Titanics lined up nose to nose. In the end, Cortana sacrificed the Pillar of Autumn to destroy the Halo installation and the flood on board. A heroic ending for a heroic ship. When humanity decided that they wanted to bravely expand their influence outside the confines of our own solar system, they did it on the ISV Venture Star. This massive ship held all the supplies machinists and colonists needed to harvest a material known as unobtainium, a term that is so politically loaded that it kind of ruins the immersion of the movie. Unfortunately, the entire movie is just full of terribly transparent metaphors and tired cliches, along with an odd affinity for bestiality. backwards tribal savagery. Anyway, the ISV Venture Star was an impressive ship at 1.5 kilometers long. That makes it just a bit longer than the George Washington Bridge and the world's fastest 1500 meter runner, sorry if I butcher this, I'm going to butcher this, Hicham El Garage can run that distance in 3 minutes and 26 seconds. For the rest of us mere mortals, the average time for that distance is just under 10 minutes. So yeah, it's very possible that this guy will lap us three times before we run the entire distance of the ship even once. The Empire was always about intimidation and size, and the Imperial-class Star Destroyer was living proof of that doctrine. With millions of systems to rule and protect, the Empire depended on these gigantic ships to enforce Imperial law over entire systems and regions of space. At over 1.6 kilometers long, these Star Destroyers were just about a mile long. This massive ship was just a bit shorter than two Burj Khalifa stacked on top of each other. And what makes these ships even more impressive is that they can enter most atmosphere and maintain flight. 
Again, if you want to see more size comparisons of stars vessels, check out our YouTube page, Generation Tech, here. Well, guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about our video. Also, let me know which one of these ships is your favorite and were you surprised by any of the sizes of these ships. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification button for more awesome sci-fi film content. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.